Hello friends! If you're new, welcome to my channel. If you're a fan or a subscriber, welcome back. I really do appreciate your patronage. Today I'm going to be talking about Daniel's apocalyptic visions. Not much else I need to say before I get started, so let's get on with the video. In the book of Daniel, the Apocalypse is chapters 7 through 12, developed out of and tacked onto the court tales, which is a completely different genre. Earlier works, such as the first writing of the Apocalypse of Moses, assumes the reader is familiar with this character, but Daniel's Apocalypses of necessity are tied to the court tales. Another unique aspect of Daniel is that his apocalypses did not attain scriptural status in the Second Temple period. Scriptures, which consisted of the Torah, the Prophets, and the Psalms, did not contain the book of Daniel. The Daniel in Ezekiel is another figure. For reasons explained previously, the authors feel that the first edition of Daniel 7 was penned sometime right after Alexander the Great's death. Given this timeline, we know that after Alexander's death, his generals fought amongst themselves for control of the empire. Due to this violence, the Jews felt that the accommodation of Gentile rule was no longer tenable and required a response. One such response was to redact the Danielic tales to include Nebuchadnezzar's dream to assert divine sovereignty. In Daniel 7, which remarkably parallels chapter 2, God reveals more secrets about his intentions, namely to Daniel. It is likely then that the first writing of Daniel 7 represents part of the literary development among Babylonian Jews that established the genre of the apocalyptic literature at the end of the Persian Empire. The Daniel Apocalypses attempt to persuade the audience about the truth claims they make about God, specifically that He is in control of historical events and there will be a resolution to the Antiochian crisis. These can be described as epiphonic rhetoric, that is, they disclose a transcendent reality by making it compelling through the use of vivid terms. Part of this technique is relating the story through writing in the first person. These apocalypses offer a key to political history as well as a prediction to the outcome of the persecutions of Antiochus IV Epiphanes. They also generate a thirst for knowledge by combining transcendence, hierarchy, and mystery. Knowledge is a divine secret accessible only by a chosen few. Those who receive this knowledge even require interpretation, like an angel does for Daniel. Visions in chapters 7 to 8 also present knowledge as requiring decoding, though uninterpreted symbols hint at more dimensions of knowledge. The symbols and illusions used would have been easily understood by any competent reader at that time. However, some of the knowledge conveyed presents conceptual difficulties like deciphering the hidden figure in the coded history of chapter 11 or understanding the numbers in chapter 12. Number patterns are also important in the rhetoric of apocalyptic literature. 
as they organize history into patterns that do not arise from the historical events themselves, but transcend history. The knowledge of the Book of Daniel also presents itself as desirable through its association with books and scribes, in a time and place where few were literate, both held authority. Daniel writes down his own visions, which are to remain secret, thus giving the reader the impression that they are privy to ancient knowledge. Well, friends, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button, press the subscribe button, and if you would like to know when I come up with new content, hit the bell next to the subscribe button. My Twitter, Discord, email, and PayPal links are in the description, along with the source that I used for this episode. If you wish to support this channel, you may do so on my PayPal link. Keep learning and searching for truth. Here are a few videos from my library. If you have not watched them yet, go ahead and watch them and tell me what you think. Until next time, friends. Goodbye.